Hi friends, and welcome to a new video about how limitations can boost creativity. In this video, I want to talk with you about a concept that I've been experimenting with quite a bit recently. And uh, we actually will be building the up sound that you have been hearing in the intro, this one. And um, when I made the sound, I actually limited myself because I sometimes find it quite hard to really get creative with all the different devices that, for example, a platform like Ableton has to offer because there's so much in it. And then sometimes it really makes sense to say, okay, I limit myself to three different devices. And with these devices, I will do sound design today. And um, for this sound, I actually used Ableton's Probability app, then Ableton's uh, Drift synthesizer for the actual sound engine, and then the uh, delay device for an audio effect. And um, yeah, for this video today, we will just use these three devices and get creative with them. Okay, first let's actually add a new MIDI track. And then to this track, add the different devices that we need. Okay, now we have all three devices added and currently it sounds like this. So way different than the sound that we actually were looking for. Let's first go into the probability app and work on this device. For the probability app, I actually want to switch the chord mode to off because if you have it on, you just need to hold one key basically and then or one button and then it's actually creating a chord automatically. But for this sound, we actually don't want that. So we switch it off because I want to play the chords directly that I want to use. So now very basic um, up sound and I like to use the inversion two on this one and also to set the time to 12. And um, this is something I really like to do because I feel that this time signature really nicely grooves to a four on the floor kick drum and it's actually very nice to use in techno music. Maybe just quickly before we move on, I definitely want to bring down the filter a little bit on the... Yeah, I think this is uh, way better. And maybe we can also already shape the envelopes. So I'm here now in the envelopes tab of the drift synthesizer and definitely sustain goes all the way down because we don't need sustain either on envelope one, which will be our amp envelope or on envelope two, which will be our filter envelope. Yeah, that sounds more like the sound that we are after. Okay, for now, I will also mute the delay effect so that we don't hear the delay and can just focus for now on the up. Okay. Let's go in the probability app and check the other settings. So the first page, I think we're already set here. Let's move on to the second page. And this is now where we select the app style and the octave. Let's go for octave one. And I really like the converge app style. Or maybe we can combine two. Let's actually go with Converge and Diverge because I think this is a very um, nice setting for this ARP. Okay, now we get to the different probability settings and this is where I think this ARP really gets interesting. So here we can set different um, probabilities and I like really to um, set the rate probability for now I think to off because what it actually does can hear it here it adds probability and jumps around in different rates but for this sound I don't want it so um, I go uh, over to this sound here and this 
changes the style. So I just, basically you always have a minimum and a maximum um, value. The reason actually how I set this here to 12 is because I think style 13 is a, a chord style. So it will just play one chord, which I find kind of like it breaks the ARP style a little bit. So yeah, I just set it the maximum to 12, which gives me kind of like a probability that it um, yeah jumps uh, through the different uh, styles of the ARPs. Let's also go to, um, to page number two. And here we can set the length probability and the octave probability. This is something I actually really like because you can already hear it definitely adds a lot of variety to the sound, which I think is really nice. Yeah, I think a setting like this will work probably fine. Now that the ARP is set, let's move on to the drift synthesizer and actually work a little bit on that synth. So basically, uh, let's first go to the main tab and let's see what we have here. So we have for oscillator one, we have a saw wave, which I think is fine. And for oscillator two, for now a sine wave, but I think I'd rather go with a square because I think it just works a little better. Maybe we can apply some detune. Not too much, just a little bit to make the sound a little sound a little wider, so to say. Okay. And maybe also add a little bit of noise. Always nice. Always need to see how it reacts then to the filter. nice okay let's bring the filter down again by the way speaking of filter I definitely want some uh, filter envelope and I want the filter um, to be modulated so to say by envelope number two so basically what I do here with the mod source I go here to envelope two and have this one envelope the uh, sorry modulate the filter really hear it now. Something very nice to play around uh, with uh, when shaping the sound uh, further. What we can also do maybe just uh, to introduce the LFO, just a very slow LFO rate and I mean why not apply that also to the filter. Not too much. just a little bit like this. Yeah, I like a low value here because that really makes the, um, the LFO move uh, nicely and gives us a very nice amount of modulation. Okay, let's look further at the envelopes. And this is something in the intro um, I played around with and also something I really like in general to modulate when playing live because you can hear right now. How nicely we can already shape the sound with just playing around with the envelopes. Unfortunately, directly in drift there's no way at least i have not found one to modulate different envelope settings like for example the envelope one attack or decay uh, with an lfo that's unfortunately not a destination that you can choose um, but still i think it's um, it's actually uh, quite nice to play around with and yeah when you play live ah, it's just nice I think you can hear that you can get really, really creative with that, which is a lot of fun. 
cool now we can also go to global and here we have some also very nice settings i like to set the sound to mono because this makes us add thickness to the sound and this really impacts the sound you can really create or turn a rather thin sounding up like this into something way thicker I think it sounds really really nice and uh, yeah it just adds another level to your sound if you really want to have something to cut through the mix I think this is a nice way to achieve that. Also what I always like to do is um, to have here the um, drift brought up. Drift is actually the the control that gives the synthesizer its name and as far as I understand it it adds a little bit of drifting of the sounds so basically something that you have in analog os um, in analog synthesizers where sounds constantly change because you have actual analog oscillators working in them this is something that drift tries to emulate so the higher you bring up the amount the higher the chance that your sounds always sound a little bit more lively and analog so to say and this is something i really like about this synth because it's just one control and already adding a very nice um, level of control Okay, let's move on to the last step, which is adding the delay. For that, I just need to unmute it, which basically is to activate the device. And now let's get a little bit creative with this device too. I like to set it here to four. You can already hear that it adds a very nice, um, very nice depth to the sound. Definitely want to make the filter a little bit more narrow. And something I really like to do is go in here and then um, enable the ping pong delay. Yeah, that already sounds pretty nice. Cool thing about delays is also that you have some modulation options here. So basically this is again your filter and this is something also I actually quite like about the push 3 is that in different tabs of the sounds you have sometimes the same parameter so for example here I have control over the filter while at the same time here I have control over the filter too which is very handy because then I don't need to jump back and forth and while I'm working here for example on the modulations I can stay on this page and still um, adjust the filter to taste which I think is really cool so let's do that And here you can get quite wide with that. What's also always fun is to offset the values a little bit. I think here we already have a sound. Let's quickly check. That is quite a little bit different here. We have a little bit of um, higher feedback and lower dry wet. Let's listen again to this one. It sounds a little smoother, but that's also of course because I have adjusted the envelope settings there. So let's go back here to the envelope. I think it sounds really, really nice. Let's get a kick drum in and see how that sounds together if we play together.
really, really nice sound. And that's actually already it. I just wanted to show you with this video how easy it is and how quickly you can get results when you really limit yourself, in this case, to three devices. Um, and the good thing is it doesn't have to stop there because once you have your three devices explored and you think you have all the um, all the values dialed in that you think is a nice sound, you can still think, okay, how can I even bring this sound to the next level? For example, for this sound here, I would now, of course, uh, think about a reverb because I think it definitely needs some depth and some room. But yeah, these are then questions that you can explore after you have done basically your initial sound design. So I try to think of it of two steps, like the first step is really pick three devices. In this case, these are these three devices, but it can actually be anything, any synth or even samples, anything you want to get creative with, and then just try to get the maximum out of it. And then in the next step, just maybe let it rest for a day or even longer and then come back to it and think, okay, how can I bring this sound even to the next level? And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you are having a good time. I hope you're well. And um, anything else you would want to know about Push 3 or my music production workflow in general, feel free to just drop me a comment below. I'd really appreciate also a sub to the channel and uh, a like of the video because that always helps. And till then, I see you in the next one. Stay creative. Bye.